This is part 7 of the ZBrush video tutorial series, Building the War Sloth. Uh, right now, I've taken my Maya model, which uh, originally came from ZBrush, but I added in these hands and feet um, inside of Maya. Uh, I've taken this in and appended it as a subtool um, to my already existing retopologized model. I've also appended in two eyeballs, which are going to allow me to uh, see some detail for sculpting in just a bit. Now, once I have all of these subtools in the hierarchy and that they're in place uh, on top of each other, it becomes very easy to transfer the detail from the model I've already sculpted without the hands and feet to the model which currently has the hands and feet. I'm going to divide the model a couple of times so it matches the resolution of the original model roughly. And I'm going to store a morph target, which is going to allow me to bring back any sort of mess ups which might happen in the mouth, since that's new geometry that I added in as well. I'll switch to the new model, and in the subtool palette, I hit project all. Uh, that's project all in the subtool palette. And as you see what happens, which is pretty cool, it transfers all of that detail from the original model to my new model, which has hands and feet. Well, I don't need the original model anymore, so I just hit delete uh, with that subtool selected, uh, and that removes it out. Now, let's take a closer look here at the face. When I do project all, yeah, it works pretty well, but there are some mess ups inside the mouth. Well, since I stored that morph target earlier, right down here, you'll notice that I'll be able to bring back some of this detail, uh, at least the original topologization. You can really see it messed up from the inside by using the morph brush to get rid of any of those weird projections that might have happened since it doesn't really know what to do with the new Maya additions. Now it does smooth out the lips a little bit and we do lose that original sculpt, but that's something that can be added in pretty quickly. And that covers the project all section of this uh, and the morph brush section, which allows me to transfer all that detail um, from one model to the other. Now you see, with a couple of additions from the clay tubes brush or the clay brush, I can actually bring some of that sculpt back in fairly quickly. So it's not a very big loss for a very big gain, which is having an uh, inside of the mouth, which is fully created. I'm also going to have some trouble areas right around my wrists and my ankles, of course, because there was no detail there originally. So what I have to do is get the smooth brush and just smooth out those little seams uh, and then re-sculpt the detail on top of it. Uh, it's not a very big deal, uh, but it is something you'll have to do to kind of make this work a little bit better. Well, when I did my project all. I had turned the eye subtools off because I didn't really want those interfering with the projection. You'll notice though that I'm going to turn them back on and the reason why I added them is because they're going to allow me to start really getting in and sculpt very closely along the eye and follow the contour. I'm going to visibility select just this area and I've turned on local transformations so that as I sculpt it's just going to manipulate around my new pivot. With the clay brush or the clay tubes brush, I find it's very easy to come in and start to define a ring around your eye with the sculpt. Now after doing a little bit of work on this, uh, I'm going to come in with my standard brush. And holding down control, I'm going to paint a mask along this edge. See me painting out a mask very subtly there. Uh, doing this is going to allow me to start to define a really sharp crease line once I've painted out the mask. By using the move brush or the snake hook brush, uh, I can come in and start to pull out some of these sections just a little bit, again to define that edge a little bit more sharply. Now I will use the standard brush to come back in and define out a little bit of that form on top. I'm going to resolve this with the move brush a little bit. It's going to allow me to tweak these points around until I get a more correct shape for the eye take it out of that football or almond shape into a more correct form. And also going to allow me to really sort of clean up any holes that might be on the interior from uh, the original form. I don't want to be able to see inside the head, so it allows me to move any points around if that's the case. All 
I'm going to use the clay brush, and it's really going to allow me to start to bring in some of the more subtle forms, like the lower eyelid uh, or the eyebrow itself. Uh, and I can sculpt this very fluidly and very much like you would with uh, actual clay using this brush. It has a very nice uh, painterly feel to it. I can start to build a little bit of bag to the eye, and I can also start to define that edge for the cheek with this brush. Holding down Alt, I can kind of press inwards uh, to get a little bit of a nicer cut. And again, I'm trying to look at that shading crease along the side of the cheek. Now, that'll take me through part seven of this video series, which was about projecting the detail from the original model to the new model with the correct topology, and then fixing any sort of, you know, little imperfections that might have happened along the way. In part eight, we're going to look at adding on armor to this model to start to finish it out.